Nikki, welcome. <laughs> you made it fast. Okay. And yet I still, it didn't, that's interesting. It didn't make me exit the other Zoom account. I did not have to put in a password. Oh, good. Did you use the uh, join link? I just clicked on it on your chat box. Very good. Yeah, the join link has the um, password embedded in it. That's oh, okay. why you didn't have to enter it separately. Yeah. All right. So I've got Nikki in over here. <laughs> the rest of you looks like it'll work if you just click on the, and I think I'm still speaking, do you? Uh, you can just click on that link in the chat tool and join and jump right over. And I see you coming over. Very good. Very good. Very good. Uh, now I'm going to, I still have that. This is, <laughs> this is a bit of a fire drill <coughs> without ethnic slurs attached there. Um, the, I'm going to share, I still have another computer over here in that original Zoom meeting, and I'm going to um, put up a, some directions on how to join us in case somebody comes in late. share on this meeting. Okay. Okay. <laughs> In the other meeting now I have that share. So I can <coughs> get rid of this one. Actually, I don't want to end it. I just want, and I don't really want to leave it. So just going to. All right. Now, hopefully I've got those who are interested in continuing uh, with me in the new meeting which is in my, yes, in my Gmail account. All right, here I have the capability to load all sorts of apps. And I have done so, rather than spend time loading them again. Um, I have done that, so let me show you what we have to play with here. If I go to my apps tool, I have to sign in now to the new account. which I'm going to have to do over here. This is a bit of a juggling match. Okay, now I've signed in. All right, so why are you not letting me see my apps? Signed in there. I'm signed in here. I'll tell you what I'm going to have to do probably is leave the meeting momentarily, update that sign in, and then come right back. I'll be right back. And I'll put Renee in charge while I'm gone. Oh, yeah. <laughs>
Okay, I'm back. And I'm not muted. Okay, good. Uh, I'm going to reclaim my uh, status as host. Sorry about that, Renee. Now let's try the apps again. That looks more promising. Bingo. All right. Now let me share my Zoom screen with you so you can see what I'm looking at. And... All right, you should now be seeing my Zoom screen. Let me uh, spotlight myself. Get that out of the way. Okay, so here are the apps that I've picked out after going through all 92 pages. There are 1,800 and some apps. These are the ones that looked especially useful. Let me get this out of the way. Um, and the one I want to show you first, the one that I'm having the most fun with, is this Pexels app. I found this by going to Discover and scrolling. In this case, I get a much wider variety of Zoom apps, but by no means all of them. They're available. Zoom seems to pick a um, selection of apps that it thinks you might be interested in. I don't know if it's completely random or if it uh, relates to what you've looked at in the past or something like that, but um, you still have that discover more apps on the app marketplace link at the bottom here. So you can go to that and pull up your app marketplace. Before we move on with this demonstration, I'm, I'm having to show you this using my paid Zoom Pro app, but it doesn't mean that if you want to play with these, that you have to go and buy yourself a Zoom Pro account outside of Confer Zoom. You, of course, can do that and uh, use some email address other than your district email address to associate with it. It'll accept any email address. We all have personal email addresses, probably. And you can get a free Zoom uh, account just for the asking by going to zoom.us. And there's a big button up. In the, if you're not logged in to your Confer Zoom account, there's a big button up in the upper right that says, uh, sign up, it's free. And you can create a free Zoom account in about two minutes. It has the vast majority of the capability that your Confer Zoom account has. The only, well, there are maybe three, uh, two major limitations to the free Zoom accounts. The main one is that Zoom meetings that have more than two people in them can't last for more than 40 minutes. Um, what Zoom doesn't advertise is that if you want to meet for more than 40 minutes, all you have to do is restart a new meeting and have everybody join back in. It's a little disruptive, but once they've done it once or twice, they, they figure it out pretty easily. You all certainly figured this out in a hurry today, and what I just did with you is a lot more complex than what uh, just restarting another meeting in the same account would be particularly if they have your personal meeting link, all they have to do is when the meeting ends automatically at the end of 40 minutes, all they have to do is wait 30 seconds or so and then click on that link again and they'll go right back into the new meeting. On um, the, And then you can go another 40 minutes and you can keep doing that all day if you want to with Zoom. So that's not a huge limitation on your uh, Zoom free Zoom account. Your free Zoom account will allow you to have up to 100 participants in it, just like your Confer or well, your Confer Zoom account allows you to have 300 participants. Uh, folks, when when our class sizes get uh, above 100, I think we're all going to need to find another way to make a living. Uh, that ain't that ain't right. That ain't going to happen. So, your free Zoom account will allow 100 people to join, along with well, 99 plus you. 
Um, you also, in the free Zoom account, don't get access to polling or breakout rooms. Those are advanced features that are only available in paid Zoom accounts. But if you're not using that feature that day, that's not a big deal. And if you're using your uh, free Zoom account to just talk to one other person, there's no time limit. You can run your Zoom meeting as long as you like. Also, there's no limit in any free Zoom account on the number of meetings you can have in any given period of time. You get unlimited number of meetings. The only real limitation is the 40 minute time limit and that's easily subverted. And in uh, context with our topic right now, free Zoom apps have access to almost all of the Zoom apps that I'm going to show you today. Almost all the ones in that catalog can be utilized in a free Zoom account. You, in effect, when you, in your free Zoom account, you are your own account administrator. And when you try to load a Zoom app in a free Zoom account, there's a little uh, option button just below the, when you go to load the Zoom app, there's a little option button that allows you to turn on access permission for this app, since you are your own administrator. And you turn that on and then you can load the app in much the same way that I showed you earlier with some of those other apps. So you can play with these by um, creating your own free Zoom account if you haven't already done that. Also, I've noticed that uh, Tech Connect has added that message at the beginning when, when you start a Zoom meeting in your Confer Zoom account or join a meeting being held in a Confer Zoom account, you get that little stipulation that it's educationally related and uh, utilized for the purposes of the California community colleges and so on. They didn't used to bother with that because they, they were happy with you using that account in any way you wanted to so that you would get more familiar with Zoom. But I guess they figure by now everybody's gotten about as familiar with Zoom as they need to. So they've added that restriction and you have to agree to it that you can't just use that to talk to your, your um, uh, relative and, uh, and cross, cross the country on a personal note. Your free Zoom account you can use for that. So it's handy to have a free Zoom account. I have like three or four of them. You just have to, you have, to have a, a separate email address for each Zoom account. So you have to go and make another free account somewhere. If you want another Zoom, free Zoom account, you just make another email account somewhere on, you know, on Outlook.com or Yahoo or Gmail or um, any number of other free email uh, providers that you can get uh, accounts from. And then use that to sign up for another free Zoom account. And Zoom doesn't seem to care. The, uh, at least they don't do anything to prevent it. So, fine. <laughs> you know. So you can have a free Zoom account and you can load these apps. And if you find something that's absolutely compelling that you really want to use with your students, you can just uh, send your students the join link for your free Zoom account instead of the one for your confer Zoom account. There's nothing stopping you from doing that. The students, you know, privacy issues aren't any more acute in the, the free account than they are in the confer Zoom account. So the, uh, if you see anything here that you really like, you can utilize it with your students with the stipulation that you're going to have to renew the meeting every 40 minutes if you need to go longer than 40 minutes with them. Another thing you can do is you, some of these apps are, are um, content creation type apps and you can use them with your free Zoom account as long as you're not creating content that lasts for more than 40 minutes. So there's a lot of things you can do with some of these apps by immediately just by creating yourself a free Zoom account. So let's take a look at a few of these 
that I've uh, that I've uh, put in here in my app marketplace. If I go first off, I have to sign in here with my uh, Google credentials. There I am. Okay, and I can go to uh, manage my apps and look at added apps, and I can see the ones here that I have added. And the one I want to start with is the Screencast-O-Matic video editor. This is actually a really good video editor that you can access for very minimal cost. Um, I'm going to go back to my apps here. And the Screencast-O-Matic video editor, are you seeing this? Yes. No, you're not. Yeah, you are. Okay. Um, the, because I am sharing my Zoom screen, right. Okay, the Screencast-O-Matic video editor uh, does not show up in your My Apps list here. It only shows up if you go to Screencast-O-Matic, the Screencast-O-Matic website. Screencast-O-Matic is a web-based uh, screencasting tool which allows you to record your uh, uh, computer screen like the screen recorder in Canvas Studio. In fact it is the same screen recorder that you have in Canvas Studio or at, at least it works exactly the same way and it looks exactly the same because Canvas uh, Instructure just bought a licensed version of the Screencast-O-Matic recorder to, um, from Screencast-O-Matic. So I can bring up this app, or rather I can go to the Screencast-O-Matic site, and let me make sure, and if at any point, since this is, there's a lot of balls in the air here, if at any point I'm talking about something, and you can't see it, please let me know immediately. But screencastomatic.com, a made up word, is the is how you access Screencastomatic. And you have to uh, you have to sign in. If you want to use this app uh, with the, the Zoom app you have to have what's called a deluxe account um, with Screencast-O-Matic. Screencast-O-Matic does offer free accounts, but they don't offer the level of uh, capability that are, it would be required for this Zoom app. The good news on that is the pricing for, uh, educator, for uh, educators on this is $18 a year. <laughs> if you sign up using your uh, sdccd.edu account, you can have access, full access to the deluxe level, or the, which is the m minimum paid level for uh, Screencast-O-Matic, for uh, 18 bucks a year. That That's not, you know, they're, they're not really sucking much blood out of you for this. And this gives you the capability to do what I'm about to show you here. I've already logged in here, and I'm going to pull up my um, Screencast-O-Matic video editor, which is the same video editor, by the way, that you have access to in Canvas Studio, but this one works better. It's better resourced than the one in Canvas Studio. It has exactly the same interface, and it's the same code, but uh, Canvas Studio hasn't resourced it to the level Screencast-O-Matic has at their site. And what that means to you is that you can use this editor to edit your two-hour, three-hour long Zoom recordings. If I bring up that editor by clicking on that button there, I get the, I'm asked to open this editor. And in a moment, it will come up. 
And you should now be seeing my Screencast-O-Matic video editor. And since I have enabled this Zoom uh, app and linked it to my Screencast-O-Matic account, I have this little connect button here in the upper right hand corner. And when I click that, I can, since I've loaded that Zoom app, I can connect with Zoom. And I can connect, this gives me the capability to automatically or to easily pull up my local Zoom recording files from my local hard drive or have Screencast-O-Matic automatically scrape my Zoom cloud recordings out of the Zoom cloud. So this is kind of reminiscent of that app I showed you early on for uh, Google uh, Drive that automatic, can automatically pull your Zoom cloud recordings into Google Drive. This allows you to pull them into Screencast-O-Matic's editor so that you can edit them and it allows you to do so more or less automatically. I can't connect this automatically with my Zoom account uh, because my, Zoom, my uh, paid Zoom account and my Screencast-O-Matic account don't have the same email associated with them. And in order to demonstrate that for today's thing, I would have had to have signed up for a second deluxe account uh, with a different email address at Screencast-O-Matic for a year. And it would have cost me, since I can't use my sdccd.edu account because that's in use at Zoom for something else, it was going to cost me 50 bucks. And I just didn't, and my wife told me she'd, um, do violence to me if I did that for just one, this one demonstration. So uh, normally I would just click a, uh, right here, select account and launch the web browser and it would link my Zoom account. Let me show you what the dialogue looks like. Get this out of the way. Yeah, I get this message, failed to finish Zoom account authors because the emails don't match and I'm just not willing to. But what you would see if I did this is basically what you see here. Bunch of Zoom recordings that get automatically pulled down. I can still um, pull a new Zoom recording in that I have done locally since I do most of my recordings locally anyway. It um, doesn't uh, affect me that much functionally. So I can just click this import button here and I can go to, I can navigate to my Zoom folder under documents, which is where my uh, Zoom, local Zoom recordings are score, uh, stored automatically. And I can just pick a recent one like from, uh, Let's see, let me pick one where there's not a bunch of them. Yeah, there's a, a Zoom recording that's stored on my local hard drive. I just select that and click open and it starts importing it into Screencast-O-Matic. In a moment, it'll appear in another category here of today and uh, I don't especially have to wait on that I can just go ahead this is one I imported yesterday for purposes of this demonstration by that same process if I want to edit this recording I just don't click on it and here it drops that recording into Screencast-O-Matic's interface, and I have my Screencast-O-Matic editor. If I hadn't already pulled this video up into Screencast-O-Matic already, it would, this process would have taken a little longer. I just didn't want to wait you, make you wait around while I was 
doing that. And this editor has considerable capability. It is really a pretty full featured video editor. And remember, this costs, this costs you uh, $18 a year. What, a dollar and 30 some, 40 some cents a month. Uh, I can play this. Well, welcome everyone. The video and the audio quality are great. I have a potload of tools here. I can, uh, the a common one is the cut tool. I can magnify the timeline here so I can, the, this, you'll note this uh, Zoom recording is um, about, what, 170 minutes long over two hours. So it shows the whole length of the recording on the timeline here. I can magnify that timeline. And now I'm, um, I'm, things go a lot faster when I play. Well, welcome everyone. Let's say I wanted to cut everything out before, uh, the, uh, where I start talking. I can cancel this out. I can move my edit cursor over to just before where I start speaking. I can now say cut and I can just drag, click and drag that over and I can cut that piece off. So now, well, welcome everyone. And I can do the same thing at the other end. I can scroll to the other end of my timeline and I can cut at, move my cursor over here, I can cut at the other end as well. I can insert videos into the timeline uh, by just going to the insert tool, insert video from my computer. And I can just go to my videos folder and I can pick a video that I have on my local hard drive. I can open that and in the insert will happen wherever I have this little blue bar and I can okay that and it inserts that. So now I've added a video to this timeline. Here's my original Zoom recording over here. And here's that video that I just recorded. Or that I just inserted, I should say. So I, I can also do things like cut uh, stuff out of the middle of the video. If I put my edit cursor in the middle of the video and click and drag, I can cut out stuff from the middle of the video as well. And there, as you can see from the list of tools here, and I don't have time to do a full tutorial on this video editor, but there are lots of other things I can do here. I can add narration. I can add uh, transitions between clips. I can speed or slow down, speed up or slow down playback on a video. I can um, add overlays, images, and things like that over time. I can do all sorts of special effects editing here with this editor. It's really quite a capable editor. And again, $18 a year. Um, and I can have it automatically pull my Zoom recordings down so that I don't even have to go and download the Zoom recordings manually and then import them into uh, Screencast-O-Matic. It will do that for me automatically. So this is a pretty darn capable Zoom app. And if you were, say, cre uh, if you just wanted to use this app for this, if you just, uh, I'll get it out in a minute. If you wanted to use this app for this purpose, you could just create yourself a free Zoom account and pull down your Zoom recordings from your uh, 
state supplied Zoom account, which I've done here, and then edit them. And once you are done with your editing, this gives you the uh, this system gives you the option to either save the edited video as a file on your local hard drive. You can upload it to Screencast-O-Matic servers where it can be shared, from which it can be shared with your students. But you get a limited amount of storage at Screencast-O-Matic. But the real uh, great option here is that you can upload this to YouTube. Uh, YouTube accounts are free and they are unlimited. You can store as much video there as you like. And the videos can be, if the account is verified, they can be as long as you like and they can be uh, uh, as many of them as you like. So it's unlimited usage and you can share your videos w w with your students from YouTube very easily through Canvas or other means. So this gives you a complete video production environment. This app does. The app is free. The Screencast-O-Matic account to use it is eighteen dollars a year. And uh, for if you're an if you're an educator, and you sign up using an EDU email address is all they require for verification. So this one got me excited. This one is, is pretty cool. It, it cuts out a lot of the uh, hassle and time that it takes to uh, edit your Zoom recordings in something like Camtasia. And it um, allows you to upload it to YouTube where it can be automatically captioned so that your edited videos are automatically accessible to your students with hearing impairment and other needs. So it's, it's really a pretty cool app. And this, I can do this in Screencast-O-Matic because I installed that Screencast-O-Matic app in my um, in my Zoom account. Okay, now there in the 15 minutes we have re remaining, I'm gonna kind of jump through some of these that I found useful. This one, uh, Meeting Metrics, gives you a better, and, and uh, that is uh, visible over here in my installed apps, which I am still sharing with you. Yes, I do believe so. Again, let me know if you can't see something. If I pull that up, I haven't done enough meetings in this account yet to... Um, show off the capabilities of this in actual time here. But if I expand that over, this gives you aggregate data on your talk time in meetings. And it analyzes the relative amount of time you are talking and that others are talking, or indeed individuals are talking. So you can see who's participating in your Zoom meetings. You can see how much participation there is. And pretty soon, uh, well, you're gonna be able to measure your results against other people using this app. Um, <coughs> there's also a daily breakdown if I had enough uh, meetings uh, that I've that I'd done recently in this Zoom account, you'd have, uh, once you have recorded at least one meeting, we'll display the following data for your meetings. So I could see a daily breakdown of this kind of data. So this gives you some feeling for how your Zoom meetings are going, who's participating, how much time you're spending speaking versus your students, and so on. So it, it's a useful little app. I just minimized it back down using this button here in the upper right. And I can close this app at any time and go back to my apps list. So that's meeting metrics. Uh, here's a collaborative whiteboard called Miro. 
If I start Miro, it starts a new whiteboard and it shares it with you. Or it's, it gives me the option to start a new whiteboard. Uh, we'll just call this uh, demo uh, 2.11.2022. And I'm going to set this to anyone can edit. Now, I haven't actually been able to try this. Theoretically, I think at this point, you all should have access to it. Let me share, click share, invite, copy team invite link. I'm gonna do this anybody with the link. It won't let me say that. So I'm gonna share Invite team, can edit, copy team, invite link. And then presumably if I go to the chat tool here and put that link in, you all should be able to access this board. I'm, I don't know if you're going to have to create an account or not. It's probably not worth worrying too much about right now, but I know that uh, certainly you would, it is possible to share this whiteboard with your students in that regard. And it's a fairly capable whiteboard and it seems to be free. Uh, and you've got a pen here, you can change pen, uh, you can select pens or markers, you can change the colors. Um, is it like a Jamboard or is it like, is it like, like the... It's like Jamboard. You've got sticky notes. Which you can move around and so on. So it's an alternative to Jamboard, which some people may find but it's tightly integrated with your Zoom meeting. So all you have to do to start it up, instead of having to, you know, start up Jamboard, uh, minimize your Zoom meeting, start up Jamboard, uh, share your screen and pull your Jamboard uh, window up and so on. This just pops up in Zoom. And it has a lot of the same capabilities as Jamboard. So uh, that's... Uh, and it's not the only whiteboard that is in uh, this app list that I have picked up here. There's also uh, Scribble, which is a really, really, really simple shared uh, whiteboard, which works pretty much the same way. Let me just create a board. I've, uh, oh, I need to sign in, I guess. And that to share this one, I may have to, you might have to be, uh, you might have to create a Scribble account. So I just have to agree to everything, create a board. And cancel that, I'll sign in. Ah. Pop this out. I don't want to take the time to worry about a code and so on. So this one's a little, a little cranky. I'm not terribly thrilled with that. So I'll just close this and I'll open my apps back up. And, oh, I can drag this over. I can, if I get part of the screen covered up with this apps list here, I can just click and drag the boundary between the two and I can um, get my Zoom screen back in front of me here. Oh, Lucid Spark is another one. This one requires some money, I think, but it's a very powerful whiteboard. Any of you use Kahoot? A student response tool allows you to provide 
fun quizzes for your students during uh, uh, online during a synchronous session. Kahoot has a. Um, Is Kahoot a hoot? Kahoot's a hoot. And um, if the uh, this provides a when, when you set up a Kahoot um, quiz, you get a join code that you share with your students and then they can join and you can do all this right from within Zoom. Or you can, if you already have the Kahoot quiz set up, you can activate it right from within Zoom and immediately begin sharing it with your students while in the Zoom meeting so that you can, they can um, participate in the quiz and you can get their responses and talk to them about it. It's an alternative to the Zoom polling app that's a lot more fun and, and um, uh, it's a lot more like bar trivia than the Zoom whiteboard app is or the Zoom polling app is and it's more likely to engage students and so on. Cahoots, I, I know a tool that a lot of people use at the district and there is an app that can be utilized and you could utilize that with your students at this point from a free Zoom account or a, one that you might have paid for. There are team games other than little quizzes that you can play and uh, one that I found particularly intriguing for some reason. Uh, I'm going to add, I'm going to show you how to add a Zoom account or a Zoom app from this uh, paid account here or from your free account by just going to discover and going to the app marketplace. Uh, you're seeing that. And I can search for bingo. And there's a bingo app for Zoom. So if you just want to take 15 minutes off in the middle of a, of a intense Zoom session and let your students play bingo, you can, you get this visit site to add button, which you click on. It asks you if you want to integrate it with your Zoom account, you authorize it. And then you open that. And here's bingo for Zoom. And we can pull that up. We can um, play one or two cards and start Da, 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 da. I don't know. This, let's face it. This this game has had endless fascination. All right, G forty nine. Nope. Christmas bingo? Huh? Is that Christmas bingo or something? Yeah, it's bingo. Yeah, Christmas bingo. G fifty seven. Nope. So you can just. <laughs> you got the mindless entertainment of bingo and you're, you get points when you get bingos and things like that. And if you're doing it as a group, of course, the first person to get a bingo, uh, you know, gets the credit and then you move on. You can apparently set this up and uh, have a ball with it. I haven't gone far enough into it to, uh, to give you detailed instructions on how to do this, but this is one that I found that looked like it might be fun. <laughs> so, let's see, is there anything else here I wanted to share with you? We're just about out of time. Oh, and yes, the last one. This is the one that I enjoy the most. To show you this one, I have to change my video here to just me. And I have to take my green, my chroma key, my remove a color off there. Okay, now I'm just speaking to you. I'll stop the share. Now you're just seeing me uh, normally. And Pexel. You click that one. I guess I really should be sharing this screen so you can see the app interaction as well. Okay, now you're seeing my Zoom screen again. Pexel gives you hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of free virtual backgrounds for Zoom. 
there, here are all your categories, like sky. I like this one. If I want that as my virtual background, I just click on it. Boom. And it adds it to my virtual background collection in my Zoom client. Right there. And um, I, so I can use it again without bringing the app up. And I can have as many of these as I like. And it makes adding the Zoom backgrounds, adding new Zoom backgrounds so much easier than the Zoom interface does that it's kind of worth it all by itself. There's the moon behind me there and so on. So this is the one I've most enjoyed playing with. It's not hugely instructional, but it's cool and it's useful. And it's something that can save you some time and effort. It's be particularly useful for people who aren't real comfortable with adding Zoom backgrounds in the usual way by going to the uh, Add button here and selecting any image and and find you know downloading images from the from the internet and then finding images that they can use for backgrounds and so on. You know that that process is a whole lot less uh, um, simple than this. Just clicking on a, a link in, uh, in Pexel and pulling up the Zoom background. So, if you are, if this has intrigued you, you can uh, get your own free Zoom account and you can go to the Zoom app marketplace, as I've shown. You can discover apps and you can try things uh, on your, to your heart's content. Um, and if you find something that's especially useful, you might even be able to make use of it through your free Zoom account, either for yourself, like the Screencast-O-Matic editor, app or in uh, shorter Zoom meetings with your students. All right, let's see if I have any questions in this chat. Don't think so. And let me ask you if you all have any more questions for me. I do. This or anything else. I do. It's me, Kathy. Good, go, go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Are there any apps? Because, like, I have this totally asynchronous class, public speaking class. Right. And I'm really struggling with it. They're not keeping up with the work. I mean, I even had a four week class and I didn't have problems. So, is there any way I can, or can any of these apps help with them, like, that I can put together so that they can communicate with each other? I know they have like different time periods, but they're just some of them are just not responding i mean and to what point can a professor threaten a class <laughs> right i'm sorry that was on you're filming this part no, 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 i do understand <laughs> um the anything that would be particularly useful there keeping so you're really looking for another communication channel yes and uh and they're not using canvas apparently they're not, like using discussions in canvas or something like yeah that. i mean i even learned how to set it up so that they can communicate and talk with each other through there but i have students who are saying like like, like say hey i'm doing my job but no one's responding back right and i know that there are like for instance i've talked to instructors who are business communication and and so like that they're saying like the excuse that students use like, oh, I'm really busy, I'm working is not an excuse because they said that happens in business all the time, that you give people a list of when you're available and it's your responsibility to- Well, yeah, they signed up for the class, so they committed to a certain reasonable level of work. And if, right. they, if they can't uh, put in that level of work, they shouldn't have signed up. Or as the old saying goes, if you can't take a joke, you shouldn't have signed up. But- um, um, yeah, I you think have they a right to expect a certain level of participation. So right, what, right. what we're really talking about here is making that participation as easy, seamless, and 
efficient as possible so that it doesn't take an unreasonable amount of time for them to communicate. Um, I think they think they're just going to film themselves and turn it in. That's not public speaking. I mean, it's even in sure. it's in the curriculum oh, that it has to be a live audience somewhere. Well, the the one thing I can think of that might help uh, right off the top of my head would be Slack, what? which is a um, well, they are slackers, but no. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what they call people who use Slack is slackers, but Slack is a an enhanced video discussion tool that's utilized in business a lot but there's a there at least used to be a free level of it that you could sign up to uh, sign up and use for free with a limited number of people like the number of people in a class would be and there's an app for it and there's a connector with zoom so that you can uh, uh, start your zoom meetings from within slack and things like that i honestly don't know if they're not you know, it's, it's not that different from the tools that they already have in Canvas, what they're not utilizing. But like the discussion boards in Canvas or Flipgrid in Canvas, you know, the video discussion board and so on that you can set up. Flipgrid might be another thing that would be useful. That, I don't think I know what Flipgrid is. I've seen it. Yeah, Flipgrid, and that there's not, to my knowledge, a Flipgrid Zoom app. So we're we're moving on to other discussions. But I mean, there are tutorials for it. Uh, yeah, I do have tutorials online for it. Flipgrid is a free video discussion board that you can integrate with your Canvas courses that mm -hmm. students can use. It makes it very easy for them to record videos and share them with the class. And it's a it's a more fun interface than say Canvas Studio, which they can use as well. But it's it's lighter weight, it's more fun, but it's still powerful. And we have done we have a number of tutorials on our uh, to our on demand tutorial site, which I have up here somewhere. No, that's not it. Well, maybe I don't. Just a second, let me pull that up. I take every opportunity to push this site and I am sharing my screen. Yep. So you should now be able to see our open on demand at SDCCD site, which has hundreds of video tutorials on all sorts of things in it. It's accessed at SDCCD, OLVID.org. I can put that in the chat tool. If I can find the chat tool here. There we go. That link that's just popped up in chat for you. That link is also at the end of every one of my emails that I send. It's in my email signature. If you go to here, type Flipgrid, all one word, in the search box. Press enter. We have a number of tutorials or some uh, actually some uh, uh, professional development sessions that we've done on Flipgrid. It's a great little tool to help. And, and in a communication class, I think it would be especially um, useful. And they might find it a lot easier to use and a lot more fun than Canvas Studio or uh, Zoom itself in recording presentations and so on. And it has the capability to do all that. Um, and it's automatically shared with the class when they do it. They don't have to go through a process. You don't have to go through a process of collecting their recordings and sharing them with the class and so on. They automatically show up. So, so I just like, how do I put that into my, dis like I already have a discussion and I check the part that says group so that they are communicating right. as a discussion with each other well, and only with their group. So do I add that? Well, with Flipgrid, it's all or nothing. It's everybody or nobody. Flipgrid doesn't work with Canvas groups, oh. but it would allow them to share it with everyone and uh, also work on it. Well, if they're going to do it collaboratively, they're probably going to create it in Zoom, though. 
but you might find Flipgrid useful, if nothing else, as a, an adjunct to what you're doing now to get them communicating. I'm just trying to think of visually, where do I put it? Like, do I email uh, them and say they should create it themselves? And, or do I do it through a discussion? Do I do it through No, and Flipgrid is an alternate to an alternative to the discussion tool in Canvas. It shows up in the course menu and they can okay. use it right from there. And this will show you how to add it to your Flipgrid course or to your Canvas course, excuse me. And um, here's a... Oh, like Canvas, it would show up like Canvas Studio does? It is not a, no, it's, it's an alternative to Canvas Studio. No, I mean, where would it be? Where, when students look for it, will it be on the... It would be in the course menu. On the course menu, okay. Yeah, it'd be in the course menu. And here's... Is that that gray part on the side? I'm sorry, but is that that gray part that's on the left-hand side? of where your courses show up? No, no, that's your, the blue links in the, on the left-hand side of your course. Oh, with grades yeah, and... Yeah, grades and things like that, okay. and discussions and all that, it'll appear right there. Oh, okay. And here's a tutorial for students on how to use Flipgrid in our... Uh, uh, Using Flipgrid for students, okay. And uh, we've done this, I've done section presentations on Flipgrid as part of professional development sessions several times, but there is one from uh, November the 15th of last year on strictly on Flipgrid that shows you everything you need to know about using Flipgrid and shows you what you can do with Flipgrid. So, uh, so this one might be useful if you were uh, uh, planning on using it or thinking about using it. And it is, I think it's about an hour long. The actual presentation is about an hour long. There was a question and answer period after that, but there was a, uh, I think the presentation was less than an hour. So those are some possibilities. Okay, thank you. I can throw out that might help. I don't know. <laughs> but that's, God knows, motivating. But you certainly have a right to expect participation and uh, uh, in the final analysis that's what God made F's for okay <laughs> or D minuses in the case of peppermint patty <laughs> All right. you have the right to fail you have the right to fail Thank any you. other questions please jump in about this or any any question you have at this point. It doesn't have to be about uh, Zoom apps or anything in particular. Anything I can help with. Maybe any advice from the other faculty member who's taught totally asynchronous classes? How you get them to communicate or? <laughs> I'm really, <laughs> Willing, willing to borrow good ideas, huh? I hear you. Yes, appropriate. <laughs> As opposed to misappropriate. <laughs> Outright steal. <laughs> okay. Uh, we could definitely use that. What was that app you showed where you see how much you're talking versus the people in the group? Oh, talk? yeah. Yeah. The, uh, the, um, which one was that? That was the meeting metrics app. Yeah. I look forward to getting some data on that perhaps because, um, this is the first really live meeting I've done with my paid account. Um, I just have it for, purposes of research and things like that, like uh, being able to use, utilize the Zoom apps and learn about them without being limited by the restrictions placed on the Confer Zoom account in that regard. So uh, also I, at some point in time, I may no, no longer be associated with the, you know, as a contractor of the district and I may start using my own Zoom app for 
other purposes. I have a little consulting business that uh, I had to set up in order to get paid by the district to do this. And I, uh, so far the district has been my only customer, but that uh, I might go searching for others if, uh, if they, once, once they no longer need me. So we'll see how that goes. Um, but anyway, the, uh, I hope to have some more data on that. And there were, like I say, there was something on the order of 1,800 apps in that uh, store. You may find some things that look interesting to you that I didn't think were worth uh, loading in for today. But it's certainly worth going through and taking a look at if you're interested in Zoom apps. And I figure you wouldn't, if you weren't interested in the idea of Zoom apps, you wouldn't be here today. So. All righty. Any other questions? Anything else I can help with? I hate dead air. <laughs> but I'm sorry? I said I hate dead air, but if no one's going to say anything, is there a chance? Because like sometimes when you add an app and it looks like it's legitimate, is there any way that we can be confused? Or is there any way to guarantee that we know it's I that place? Zoom has, seems to do a very good job of vetting these apps before they put them in the app marketplace. So I don't think you're likely to run into anything in the app marketplace that's going to harm your Zoom account or your computer or anything like that. I would be very surprised. I haven't been uh, concerned about that. Because I did have a fake, or something that was, a, I guess, a fake Microsoft, and it said, warning, warning. Yeah, yeah. yeah. luckily yeah. I didn't hit well, it. Here, you're not clicking on a link in an email or something like that that somebody sent to you. Here, you're actually going and actively seeking out the apps in the Zoom marketplace. I can't guarantee you they're absolutely perfect at vetting these things, but uh, it would be, think about it, if they... If they uh, gave access to an app that misbehaved and, and stole data or something like that, that would really blow back on Zoom seriously. So they have a real motivation here to make sure that the apps in their app marketplace are safe. And um, I'd say your chances are very, very remote that you would ever pick up an app that would do anything untoward. So I'm not, I'm not overly concerned about that. That is all I can tell you. But you always want to think in those terms. And is this something that I really want to have connected to my Zoom account or connected to my Google account or my Microsoft Teams account or whatever? Uh, uh, where is that data going to end up? How is it going to be used? Uh, so, yeah, I'm not saying it's an illegitimate concern, but I'm fairly comfortable with Zoom's uh, due diligence on this. And you said that the flip grid might be more useful, but it's not with Zoom. I no, that's not a Zoom app. It's just a. It's another. It's another uh, online resource. It's a, you go to a website to sign up for it. And Flipgrid, I know, is, is fine. Lots of people at the district are using Flipgrid. We've trained on it for some time. Uh, I've never heard anything bad about Flipgrid. Everybody who uses it seems to love it. And it just really adds another level of communication to your uh, Canvas courses. And it's so much easier to utilize than Canvas Studio, which has a lot of the same capabilities when combined with uh, uh, Canvas discussion topics. And Canvas Studio, you can do most of the things you can do with Flipgrid with those two tools that are already built into Canvas. But Flipgrid just makes it more easy and fun for the students. And for you, you can, you can create some hilarious videos with uh, Flipgrid with minimal effort. And you can also do screencasting with it. You can record your screen with Flipgrid and put little you know, ad hoc 
tutorials up for your students in your Flipgrid discussions and so on. So it's it's a neat tool, and it's one that pe people who uh, use it just love it. So okay. I think I'd ask you about a, something that Zoom could put into Canvas where students can meet and. Um, yeah, the there are. Uh, you know, we have the Confer Zoom app in Canvas now, which is what we're using for that. But, um, and it does have considerable capability, but it's not the best designed app I've ever seen. And it has some, there are some problems with access, for faculty accessing it sometimes. If your email addresses in PeopleSoft and Canvas aren't set all the same way and aren't set to your district email account. But there are other Zoom um, Canvas apps that connect Zoom and Canvas together that we will have access to when we transition uh, the management of our Confer Zoom apps from Tech Connect to Online Learning Pathways, at the Online Learning Pathways in IT at the district. Oh, so we can't do that now. But that's not going to happen right away. I had that, I asked my dean uh, just yesterday as a matter of two days ago when could this happen he said anytime from the summer uh, the upcoming summer quarter to the following winter quarter they're just not sure at this point in time at that point in time you will get a better uh, zoom canvas app which has better capabilities okay, so that zoom app that's already in canvas where you could set up your own meetings there, that can't be just used. You can't just set up one for five different groups of students. Yeah, I think you can. With a confer Zoom app, yeah, I think so. Okay, it doesn't conflict with my personal Zoom app. No, no, not in any way. All right, thank you. It just gives you access to the, your uh, Zoom app in Canvas to your confer zoom account while you're in canvas you can schedule meetings and you can uh, uh, schedule meetings with groups and things like that in there as well so that that might be worth a look and it's already in your canvas course it's there automatically you just have to be sure if you want to use that confer zoom app in uh, canvas that the default email address you have set in the portal in PeopleSoft is your sdccd.edu account. And that's not always automatically true. You have to go into the portal and check. And you also have to go into Canvas and check and see that your sdccd.edu email account is set as your primary email account in Canvas, which you do in your account settings page. And once those are lined up, then you can use the Confer Zoom app effect, uh, uh, to your heart's content. But if you try to go into Confer Zoom and it doesn't sync up, then uh, you've, you've got an email issue somewhere, either in PeopleSoft or in Canvas. And I guess I can show you that if you are, if you like. Uh, let me pull up. I'm sorry if I, it seems like I'm monopolizing your time with the other. Well, no, everybody else had a, everybody else had a chance. I'm sorry, I just got that dreaded notice that my internet connection's unstable. Hopefully, you're still hearing me. Yes. Okay. The um, here I am in Canvas. If I go to my account link in the gray bar in the global access menu, and go to settings. Here's my email settings in uh, Canvas. And you, mine's different, but you will have to have 
your sdccd.edu account set as your primary, which you do by clicking in this star column here. Mine's different because my Confer Zoom account is set up differently. So I have to have my personal Yahoo account set up because I've been around too long. <laughs> and I've been bad in the past, I guess, or something. I'm paying for past sins. Karma <laughs> is... <laughs> Karma gets you sooner or later. Okay, so as long as that's set up properly, as long as that star is next to your EDU account, and you have it set in, in the portal, which I can't show you because I'm no longer an employee. I don't have access to the portal, the PeopleSoft portal. But as long as those email addresses line up, when you go into a course, you will have access to the Confer Zoom account. Let's see if I can find a course where I've left that in the course menu. Oh, no, it looks like I've taken that out of this one. Let me put it back real quick. It's down here somewhere. There it is. Put that back in here and save the change. That was Zoom and Confer Zoom. Uh, yeah, the Zoom is something else. That's something I, that's a different one. Um, there, here's Confer Zoom, okay? This is something different. Here's the Confer Zoom app that you will see. If you click on that, in you go. And you can select, let's see, user list. Oh, appointment booking, there we go. You can book appointments and you can Oh gosh, how does this work with okay. groups? This is for individual appointments, isn't it? Yeah. In groups, you know, now that I think about it, I'm not sure you can use this for uh, uh, group discussions in Zoom. Because you can schedule events. And if you click schedule and you don't get this page, this pay, uh, uh, pane right here, you have an email problem. You have to go fix that before you can get this working. What you can do from here is just quick launch a Zoom meeting and then send invitations to the students that you want to work with in, uh, in that meeting. But I have to be there. But you have to be there. Okay, so they can't just, I can't just say uh, 12 no. to 2 for one group and no, I don't know of a way to do that. No, the only way I can think of that they could have their own group Zoom meeting with nobody else in it is for one of them to create a free Zoom account and invite the others to it and create and start a meeting and invite the others to it. And um, I do still have that on my list of tutorials to create for students to how to, how to make their own Zoom account and then invite their peers to it. And that one is near the top of my list right now. So that's probably the only way you can do what, you, what you're thinking is have them have their own Zoom room to work in. Or the Flipgrid. Or, uh, well, yeah, but Flipgrid operates, to, it's not a real-time meeting tool. Uh, they could use Pronto as well. which is down here in your global access menu. And they can start pronto meetings as well among themselves. 
I think that's, well, that's another training tool, another bit of training that have to be done. To tell you the truth, I think it'd probably be easier for one of them to create a Zoom account and use that because they're used to using Zoom. Okay. Um, but it would be separate from the Canvas. They have to. Yeah, it wouldn't. It wouldn't have anything. No, you you couldn't really put a link in Canvas for that because it would be uh, an in, uh, an individual student's Zoom account. You could. You could, I'm making this up as I go along, you could create a Zoom link to your Confer Zoom account, which is what I've done here. And if I open Zoom meetings, I'll drop into my Confer Zoom account, which I don't want to do right now. But you can set that up as a link in your course menu by going to settings and uh, apps and looking for it just selecting installed apps and looking for the I see it's great. the redirect tool yeah, there's Flipgrid. That, that's how you load Flipgrid. But you can go to the redirect tool. And you can add that app to your course. You can call it, I'll just call it My Zoom Room. And you need your join URL for your personal meeting room which I can get from my Zoom meeting. Oh, I know I can't, I'm in the wrong one. Let's see, how can I get that? Because it's a pain in a keister to type. Mm. Oh, I know, I can pull it out from an email. Dee, 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 dee. Make it up as we go along. I just need to pull up my Outlook here, which I don't seem to have running. So, so I can pull up Outlook and I can go and I can find, oh, I can just start a new email. And here's my, oh, that's not right. That's not the one I want. I can go to my sent items. And here's that link I sent. Here's that message I sent out last night. And there's my Zoom link. I can copy that. And I can paste that in here. And I can say show in course navigation. And I can add the app to my uh, list here. Uh, to have it appear in my course menu, I have to refresh the screen. And there's my Zoom room. All right, that's equivalent to this one. I've, I've put that in there twice under different names, which Canvas will let you do. And uh, so I can, I can access my Zoom room by just clicking on that and open it in a new tab and open Zoom meetings. But if in my Zoom profile, I go to my Zoom settings, I should say, and I set Allow participants to join before host to on. Then your students can also click on your Zoom link and drop right into your Zoom, personal Zoom room, and talk to one another, and they can share screens. And they can do everything, and they can record. 
I think they can record. Yeah, if you leave a uh, recording uh, available to participants in your Zoom room, they can record. So they could use your Zoom account to create their presentations. But yeah, I think I'm thinking the big. Button. I don't know if you really want them using your Zoom account for that or not. I mean, I do have them. They are able to come into my Zoom room beforehand. I just didn't. And sometimes I notice that I'll I'll log into my emails and I'll see where someone is logged in like the day before. Like I had three students who logged right. in a day before, right. and I'm thinking right. I'm not that. Like I don't live in that Zoom room. <laughs> They were just hoping they'd catch you, huh? Yeah. Um, yeah, but they could, but they could talk to one another, and they could okay. uh, plan and uh, and 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 work and share their screens with one another and so on. So that is a possibility, whether you want to use it or not. I think it's probably better if one of the students makes a, their own Zoom account, and okay. then they'd have more capability, and they'd be able to. Um, record to their local computers and so on. They could record their presentation and then upload the file to you into a Canvas assignment. Okay. So it's just own Zoom account. And, and I am and I am working on that, uh, <laughs> that tutorial. I'm sorry. I haven't gotten that one done yet. But the weekend is coming, right? <laughs> Thank you. And that's right at the top of my list. Okay. So when students did look, because I might need to check and see how long can students stay in my account. Because like I see there, like I said, were they checking to see if I'm... Oh, they, can, they can stay as long as they like. Oh, I may have it set for that, but I saw something where you had like five minutes beforehand. Is Oh, no, that was just, uh, um, yeah, that if you set that parameter, they can't join any time. They can only join a few minutes before your meeting. Okay. But if you uncheck that, they can join any time. I have okay, mine so, set, and, so and that's not, not set by default. So if you do, in your account, probably that is not that limitation is not set. So they could obviously it's not because you said somebody joined a, a day early. <laughs> Several so, people. That was not the first time. So now I'm wondering. Oh, I I thought, happens okay. All the time. <laughs> okay, I need to change that then. I mean, they could be hanging out doing who knows what in my Zoom. <laughs> yes, they could. <laughs> they could be. <laughs> Oh God! <laughs> I'm having a you don't revolution. Even want to think about what they could be doing in their Zoom account. And then I'm the one that gets. That's and they could record to their local computer, <laughs> and it would have your Zoom account stamp on it. So. Oh my gosh! I could be. They could be. Something. You know, there's somebody in the San Fernando Valley could be using your Zoom account. You know what the leading industry in the San Fernando Valley is. <laughs> I'm not going to mention that, but you can imagine. Okay, I need to change. I need to reset that then. So the only reason that they can do that, that is because I must not have it set. You're right. But I can have it set to like five minutes before yeah, five. You can do that, yes. Okay. That's a relatively recent capability that's been added to Zoom. Used to be if you turned it on, they could come in anytime and you couldn't limit it. So. Okay, thank you. That I mean, I learned something. I like you know, I needed to know. I think people occasionally just drop in and talk to one another using my account. I set that up when not everyone had a Zoom account. Now, just about everybody does, so it's not as useful as it once was. But uh, to other people, but I don't care what people do in my Zoom account. <laughs> if I'm not there, I don't have to look at it or listen to it. Okay, thank you. You bet. All right, some great questions. And uh, looks like it's just the two of us left. Oh, okay. so is there anything else you want to ask about or talk about? Uh, no, I, I think that's it. Uh, I just need to, like I said, the, I feel a little frustrated with the totally asynchronous. And yeah, I, I, <laughs> what can I say? I, don't want to fail this I understand. Okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, I. I've even had I had emergency. I got some good ideas on how to mitigate that frustration. Okay. So I'll maybe try I get, I'll try to I'll commit to getting you that uh, tutorial for your students on how to create their own Zoom account um, by Monday. Okay. 
Okay. So, but I probably should like make some kind of, because I had a special meeting yesterday, emergency meeting. Ah. Three people showed up. Yeah. I hear you. Yeah. And like, and then I have students who are, I'm, I had a deadline. It's totally asynchronous. You can't force them to attend. Yeah. And so, and I, can you give them extra credit? I heard that you can't bribe them with extra credit to come. I, I don't know. Uh, oh. I wouldn't, that's an instructional matter. I would defer to your department head or your dean on that. I, I have certainly been known to do things like that, but I don't know if it's. If I pushed the exam back just to give people more time because I, I thought it's more important you focus on your group than an exam. Just do the exam when you get a chance. I, I know I, I can do that. Right. Okay. Well, thank you. And thank you for giving me permission for taping too. Oh, well, always happy to do that. Because I'm the kind of person I have to go back and look again, do it again. And doing a search. Like trying to hide things in this day and age. <laughs> as, as it says in Jeremiah. In the Old Testament, be sure your sins will find you out. So I've given up on that. Besides, I'm old enough that <laughs> it's not much to be afraid of anymore. All right. Thanks, Dave. All right, Kathy. Be thanks back. so much for coming. How do I talk to you what? soon? Bye-bye. <laughs>